Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. Thank you for your patience. Hear me. We are gathered here and you have spent a few days to tabernacle in the presence of God. Pastor, I can tell you that most people here, if we were to write a prayer request, more than 90% of people here, the limitation will be finances. Am I right? Please listen carefully. Listen carefully. So you don't have to receive this one next year. Next year you can come to receive something else. But not this one again. Listen carefully please. This finance thing is a very serious thing. Don't ignore it. You will spend your life paying the price. Don't mind ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You see what? Lack of finance will punish you more than demon spirits. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Satan will allow you get the healing anointing a thousand times before you get the grace for prosperity. Because when you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But when you prosper, the work of the Lord can experience direct advancement. Please listen to me. Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2. Every time Satan wants to destroy and disrupt your spiritual growth, especially ministers of the gospel, please listen. There is the most effective strategy is to bring economic destruction. Are we together? If Satan uses a man, it doesn't work. He uses a woman, it doesn't work. He uses cultism, it does not work. He will meet you at the gate of your need because he knows that you will hardly resist that temptation. Now, let me tell you how Satan destroys men, even people in ministry, because many people who are in various kinds of compromises today did not start like that. They started sincerely, but the reality of hunger, every time there is hunger, you will go where food is, even if it is Egypt. Egypt is not the place for you to go ordinarily, but when there is hunger, the Bible says, this is Jacob, verse 1. We'll read 1 and 2. Don't forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn, where? The problem was not the corn. The problem was where it was located. There is power, but in a shrine. Somebody can give you money, but that place is in one coven somewhere. It says, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down hither and buy for us that we may live. And even though I'm a prophet without corn, I will die. A prophet without corn will still die. A ministry preaching the gospel without corn will still die. This is how, this is the genesis of how Israel later became slaves in Egypt. It was hunger that took them to Egypt. Every time there is hunger, Satan transports Israel from their place of covenant to their place of bondage. There are many men of God today who have joined so-called associations. They started with purity and serving God sincerely. But with time, when the issue of church building came, with time, and it's, it's easy for us to criticize people and point hands, but until we show people the way, we have no right to criticize people. That's why you must thank God for conferences like this. Because some of you, only God knows what you are about to join right now. Out of pressure. How are you doing it that it looks like you, you have your needs met? And somebody will tell you there is something. The only thing is that I can guarantee you, you will get that result. But are you ready to, to pay the price of the location? There are many sincere men of God who have soiled their hands today with practices that are demonic and some practices that are upright fraudulent. You know why? They are not insincere people. In fact, some of them still feel the pain while they are doing those things. 
when a man of God stands and forth, his children are unable to go to school. The school fees is increased. Membership is reduced. Covenant partners and helpers are gone because of the economy. Chances are excellent that he may bend to any suggestion. And some of you, let me tell you, if that temptation has not come to you, it's not, be, it's not because it cannot come. You've not gone far enough to need it. It's coming. Even Jesus, Satan told him, you will need resources. Bow to me and I will give this to you before you start your ministry. Because Jesus, if you don't bow to me, economy will pin you down. Jesus said no. When Satan comes to you when your stomach is full and you cast him, he will leave you. He will wait till you are hungry. And he said, like I said five years ago, are you still interested? There is corn in Egypt. Go and buy for us so that we will eat and not die. There is no record that they came back. As soon as they went there, their father later joined them. And for a while it looked like prosperity until there arose another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Hallelujah. The one area where I saw real challenge in my life and ministry was the issue of finances. Miracles and the anointing and all of those things were there, but this finance thing. We held a crusade. You've heard my story. A crusade and we were owing then 150,000. I know you may laugh now. The people setting the sound were there hearing me shouting and saying, God can do all things on the crusade ground. They saw the sick healed. It was none of their business. As soon as we wrapped up that crusade, they now said, no, what is it now? You cannot, the money to transport the people back to Zaria was not there. The money to pay for accommodation was not there was just by faith and I said God this can't be you this doesn't add up eventually I pleaded with somebody who gave me a check of 90,000 and I called them they collected it from Zaria they went straight to a bank in Kaduna and they found out it was a dot check they reversed immediately in anger and came back to meet me They said, no, this one, we're going to go and call the police. I said, for what? I'm not a criminal. Just give me time. And I said, God, this, this is not a good way to do ministry. For some of you right now, as you're standing here, the bills on your head will not even allow you to pray. Even if you lock the door, after three hours, we think you are praying. You are worrying. God, is this how my ministry will be? Listen to me. I'm not just trying to just talk about money. But you need this to find rest for God's sake. So that you can focus on the things of the kingdom. And don't let anybody tell you God cannot give you rest on that wise. You can enter your Sabbath. Believe me. Pastors, leaders, we have to pray. It takes a lot of prosperity to help you to be efficient in ministry. Now I know that there are several aspects of prosperity. I'm sure that your pastor has done a lot of teachings on that wise. My assignment is to pray that prophetic dimension. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer The helper of man hmm. You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer. You are Ebenezer. The prophetic is powerful. You can wave the door of lack and want goodbye. And believe me, it can wave you back. Never to meet with it again in your life. 
They heard the word just like we did, but they did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For someone here, don't just argue. Give God a chance and see if he does not bless you, that's fine. The person talking to you is not ignorant. Believe me, I understand business principles. I understand principles of productivity and value and relationships and investment and all of this. But I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. You would cheat yourself and give yourself headache and slow down the pace of your achievements. If you want to rise the way men, men rise, what then is the excellency of the ministry of the Holy Spirit upon your life? How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. When God becomes involved in your life, the equation changes. One plus one can equal to anything he says the answer should be. In the name of Jesus, the gates that open up to the realm of wealth and abundance, finding favor with men, being connected to the secrets and the riches of the earth, I pray and call upon my God, who is your God, and the God of your pastor in the name of Jesus may that gate be open for you 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 in business may that gate be open for you in ministry may that gate be open for you in your family, may that gate be open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the fragrance that comes out of your life be like the field that the Lord has blessed. I declare the blessing of the Lord upon you. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your word study life in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare over you next year by this time you will return 10 times better for in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus I pray amen and amen